Before we get into the video be sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment saying I subscribed and we will personally reply to you. About 150 million years ago, snakes roamed about on well-developed legs. Now, two University of Florida researchers have discovered how snakes' legs eventually disappeared. Snakes lost their legs due to a trio of mutations in a genetic switch, known as an enhancer, that controls the activity of a gene required for limb development, according to research by Martin Cohen, PhD, a professor of molecular genetics and microbiology in the UF College of Medicine, and PhD candidate Francisca Leal. The findings appear October 20 in the journal Current Biology. Taken together, the mutations in the enhancer of a gene known as Sonic Hedgehog disrupt a genetic circuit that drives limb growth in snakes. Cohen and Leal made their discovery by studying genetic activity in developing python embryos and by comparing DNA sequences of snake and lizard genomes. While some snakes, such as cobras and vipers, are completely limbless, pythons and boa constrictors have retained some vestiges of their leg structures. In embryonic pythons, Leal and Cohen found that the three mutations work cumulatively to abolish a region of the sonic hedgehog enhancer where proteins bind to DNA, known as transcription factor binding sites. That affects the way genetic information is ultimately transcribed. Essentially, the enhancer functions like a genetic switch that turns on the sonic hedgehog gene during limb formation. With three activators of the switch deleted in pythons, the sonic hedgehog gene only flickers on before going silent, ending the process of leg growth in the embryo. It's exciting to know the precise nucleotide changes that are responsible for limb reduction, Cohen said. Surprisingly, the rest of the genetic machinery for developing legs has remained in place for millions of years and still exists in pythons and boa constrictors. Leal and Cohen found that python embryos form leg buds and turn on the entire genetic program needed to make legs, but the circuit breaks down after the sonic hedgehog gene switches off. Although the sonic hedgehog enhancer is degraded, other enhancers remain intact, including those that facilitate the activity of a gene called HOXT13, which is needed to build hands and feet. The researchers found the cellular beginnings of the entire leg skeleton, all the way to the toes, in python embryos. But by the time the young pythons hatch, all that remains is a tiny rudiment of the femur. The results tell us that python limb development progresses much further than we knew before. They make embryonic legs but the cells don't complete the process of skeletal development, Cohen said. So while pythons and boas retain rudimentary legs, more advanced snakes ultimately lost their legs altogether. The work by Leal and Cohen helps to explain exactly how that happened. In the laboratory, they found that completely limbless snakes such as cobras and vipers show more extensive decay of the sonic hedgehog limb enhancer than pythons and boa constrictors. During the past 20 years, other scientists have described snake fossils with functional hind legs outside their rib cages. The fossils are estimated to be at least 90 million years old, and while at least one of these species likely retains the legs of its limbed ancestors, some scientists believe that legs re-evolved in other snakes. Cohen thinks that their discovery of a transitory leg skeleton in python embryos shows the relics of ancestral snake legs and could have provided the raw material for limbs to reappear. The mutations that eliminated snake legs likely arose around 100 million years ago during the Upper Cretaceous period, according to Cohen and Leal's genomic studies. In 1999, Cohen published groundbreaking research detailing the molecular basis of limb loss during snake evolution. He credits Leal, who has a background in herpetology, for wanting to revisit the topic now that technology has advanced the understanding of snake genomics. Because some of these transcription factor binding sites had not yet been discovered in mammals, the latest findings also create an opportunity to go back into mouse models and perhaps even humans to look for mutations in the same genomic regions, Cohen said. While there are no immediate plans to do that, he said the findings in snakes demonstrate the power of evolutionary and comparative biology to pave new roads for biomedical science. 
Leal said it is thrilling to confirm that certain snakes have retained the molecular machinery for making limbs for millions of years. This surprising conservation, and the specific modifications in the snake genome are a clear testament of their ancestry. Snakes clearly evolved from limbed ancestors and their genomes demonstrate this, she said. Corn snake color is comprised of two predominant colors, when combined, they form the brilliant pattern we see in the normal corn snake. The two main colors are red and black. Yellow appears in varying degrees and will not be discussed here. The genetics behind the inheritance of color can be viewed as whether or not a snake has both red and black as in the normal corn, only red as in the amelanistic, only black as in the anerythristic and finally neither which results in the snow corn. There are also factors which dilute or enhance colors, thus resulting in lighter or darker snakes such as okitis or ghost corns but these are more complex and will not be addressed here. Simple Genetics Genes are composed of genetic information DNA. Different forms of one particular gene are called alleles. Different alleles of any gene can be either dominant or recessive, depending on whether the trait is expressed when both alleles are present. Phew, what a mouthful. Here's what it boils down to. Let's consider a gene that encodes an enzyme that makes a black pigment in a make-believe snake. We will represent the normal or wild type allele with the letter capital B. A mutation in this gene that prevents its function, it can no longer make the black pigment, is found and will be represented by small case b. Now, the next thing to remember is that animals have two copies of their genes. One set is inherited from their mother and one from the father. So, a wild, type, normal, black snake would have normal genes and be represented as bb. A mutant snake that has no black pigment would be bb. The mutant has two copies of the defective allele and therefore it is unable to make any black pigment, and the snake is white. Two more definitions. Phenotype is what the snake looks like, black or white. Genotype is what alleles it carries, BB or BB. Now if a wild type black snake, BB, is mated to a mutant white snake, BB, then all of the offspring will have one normal gene from one parent, B, and one mutant gene from the other, B, the offspring will be BB or heterozygous, meaning having two different alleles at a particular gene. In this example, the heterozygous offspring will be black because they still have one functional gene, B, and can still make black pigment. So the phenotype for the heterozygous animal is black while its genotype is BB. Also, if you catch, or buy, a black snake, phenotype, you have no way of knowing if the genotype is BB or BB. However, if the phenotype is white, then you would know the genotype is BB. Corn Snake Genetics Now let's apply our mini lesson in genetics to the corn snake. As mentioned earlier, they have two main colors responsible for their beautiful coloration. Red and black. A wild type or normal corn snake's genotype, can be represented as RRBB. The RR refers to the gene for red coloration and BB, the gene for black. At this point I should admit that I am vastly simplifying things. In reality there are more than two genes involved. However, one can predict the offspring of many corn snake matings using this simple two gene treatment, these two traits are not linked in any way, the inheritance of each is separate. Corn snakes that are unable to make black pigment, BB, are referred to as amelanistic. Those unable to make red pigment are known as anerythristic, a real tongue twister. Lastly, corn snakes that make neither red nor black are called snow corns. Let's consider the mating of a wild type corn snake, RRBB, with a snow corn, RRBB. To analyze the possible outcomes of this cross, you must first determine what types of gametes, sperm and eggs, are possible. A gamete has only one set of genes. So the wild type corn can only make one type of gamete, airbay, and all its sperm or eggs will have that genotype. 
Likewise, the snow corn can only make gametes that have the genotype Airb. The offspring will then all have the genotype RRBB. Their phenotype or colors will all be normal. They will make black because they have 1B gene and will also make red because they will all have 1R gene as well. They will all be double heterozygous, meaning they have one wild type and one mutant allele at two different genes. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment on what would you like to see next. And don't forget to subscribe. Animal Facts 101